Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. If you remember, not long ago I did an unboxing of this FPV drone that we have over here. Uh, I've been calling this drone Euler, but someone tell, told me that I should probably call it uh, Euler. That sounds kind of French, so I'm gonna try to do that and call it Euler. So yeah, anyways, uh, in the last video I covered some of the specs of, the, of this drone. I covered the sensors, I covered the capacity of the battery, show you a little bit the charger, the FPV camera the front uh, LED, but uh, I did mention in the last video that I was going to cover the um, the app that is used to control the drone, but I did not do that, so I'm going to do that in this video, and we will also take the Euler FPV drone outside for a test flight to check out uh, how it works. Okay, so let's get started with the app then. The app to control this drone is compatible with both iOS and Android devices. First, you need to power on the drone, once you have done that, you can go to the Wi-Fi section on your mobile device and tap it once there to pair it with the drone. That's pretty easy. Once you open the app, you will notice that the app is divided into four main sections. And although the app is in Chinese, uh, it's kind of easy to understand what is what. You know, like for example, here you have that controller, which is a control interface, and I will show you that a little bit later. But first, let's take a look at the firmware of the drone. Let me go here. As you can see, 1.1. Well, I expected a little bit more, but well, no update since maybe a year. Now, when we open initially the control interface, you will immediately see the FPV feed that the quad is sending to uh, my mobile device. Let me move the quad here so you can see it better. And it's transmitted at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. Now let's cover uh, very quickly the main control interface and the options that we have over here. If we take a look here at the left side, this icon that looks like a gear, those are the settings, of course. And then if we move to the right here, the icon on the right side that has an H, uh, sort of like a landing pad, that's of, of course the auto landing uh, option that I'll show you a little bit later. Then here in the center, we have some sort of like an emergency stop. I would not really press this while flying, uh, although I have not really tried but it should stop the motors from spinning. Then if we move to the right, we have the LED uh, control to control the front LED of the quad. Also, I will also show you that later in the video. Then as you can see here, we have a video camera icon uh, to record video. And if we look here on the side, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a camera icon for photos. Let's move to the lower section now. Here on the lower section, on the left corner, you will see that we get uh, the speed of the drone given in meters per second. Then we have the distance, and then uh, on the right side here, we have the altitude. And the, on the center area, you will see this green button. This is the auto takeoff, and it will become auto landing later. Then we have battery. I don't know why it's giving me 0% here. And then Wi-Fi and uh, of course the GPS connectivity uh, on the right corner here. And then this is some sort of like a r radar that uh, it shows uh, on the corner. Something that I really like about the app is that uh, it's really easy to control because you can place your fingers anywhere on the screen and you will see the, con the controls, uh, they show up right there. This is better than, for example, uh, the app of the Wingsland which the controls are fixed in uh, one side of the screen. So this actually makes it very comfortable and it's something that I, I like about the control interface of this quad. Okay, so now we, we, we're just gonna go outside and fly. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Before flying, of course, you know that with all these GPS quads, we need to calibrate them before being able to properly fly in GPS mode. So, uh, Let's open the app here, and right away when you open the app, notice the amount of things we can tweak over here. I'll play with that in later videos, but just want to show you now that there are so many things that you can tweak here that will affect the way this drone flies, and that's something really awesome, because usually these drones come with some uh, predetermined settings, and uh, usually there's not much you can do uh, within the app to uh, affect that. Okay, let's go ahead and calibrate now the, the quad so we can properly fly in GPS mode here. The app pretty much tells you 
what you need to do to calibrate the drone. I will show you here real quick so you can see it, but it's the same procedure that uh, you have probably already done with other uh, GPS drones. The app will pretty, pretty much tell you all that you need to do. So if you look at the app, uh, it will tell you when you need to change the rotation uh, movement and, and stuff like this. So, okay, let's try the auto takeoff function. We press the green button here once on the screen. And as you can see, the, the drone takes uh, off without problems. Now, initially, when you start flying, if you uh, even after the calibration, you will notice a little bit of deviation um, when flying in GPS mode. Why is this? That this might be because the drone has not acquired all the necessary GPS to keep uh, sorry satellites to keep its position uh, fixed. Now, although it started to fly like that initially, I mean it was sort of like moving from one side to the other. After around three minutes it picked enough satellites and it basically uh, stayed in the same place like a rock so if you kind of like starting to fly and you notice that it's moving a little bit just wait a bit just wait a bit and or you can actually wait without flying because you know it takes perhaps some minutes for the drone to uh, acquire all the satellites necessary to properly fly in gps mode that's some advice that i'll give you now uh, let me show you a little bit how to control it uh, by using the app it's very simple again you place your uh, fingers on the screen and that's it you pretty much can control it and let me tell you it's way more responsive uh, the app is way more responsive than for example the wingsland i have a harder time controlling the wingsland using the app so the auto landing also is working properly so that's good news and uh, although i'm not flying very far here as you can see this is around what 18 meters or something like this uh, i don't get a lot of lag uh, in the video transmission that happens sometimes uh, with some of these quads that you get a lot of lag and and but with this one that does not seem to get, be the case and you know so far i'm, I'm actually liking it I'm trying now the auto return home function and as you can see I just press the button once and yeah, I mean the, the drone was not really far away uh, from me but uh, it's good for initial test. I will test it later um, at the maximum distance. So okay the drone is coming now down, it's about to land and I will check how far it will land from the takeoff point. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, it's kind of like around one meter, which is okay. Most of these quads, they land sort of uh, take or give around one meter from the takeoff location. Now I would like to show you how it works. I mean, how can you fly this uh, drone with the transmitter that comes included? And this is what I love because with the app, mm, it's not as fun, but uh, with the transmitter, uh, it's really nice so once you power the drone you can go ahead and power the transmitter and then to unlock the motors we you we just uh, you just need to do what i did here basically and to block them the same as pretty standard mo most of these squads come equipped with this system of to unlock and lock the motors so okay let's take it for a flight now something that you will notice right away when flying it that this drone out of the box is certainly uh, tuned for agility it's very agile and rather fast something that I would not expect from these sort of uh, GPS drones uh, so I was a little bit surprised initially I'm like whoa you know it, it's it's kind of like fast and the yaw rate seems rather fast as well then again remember that I showed you before that with the app you can pretty much uh, tune the way you want the drone to fly I think that that's a great thing and I will try that a little bit further. I have to tell you the truth, I'm just flying with the stock settings just as it comes out of the box. But later in, uh, in my third video, I will try to play a little bit with these settings and let you know how they affect the way the drone flies. Something really cool also that I discovered by accident actually is that the sensors, they do what they're supposed to do you know once you place an object under the drone you can see that the drone immediately uh, corrects its position to avoid a collision 
and that's something very nice because I've seen many many quads in this range, uh, pre price range, sorry, that have these sensors, but I never see them actually operational. So they, there is some, they they are in place, but they don't work. With this quad, you can see that the sensors are probably working. So basically, if you're flying indoors and you have uh, some sort of obstacle uh, under the quad it will try to avoid it by changing position although they're not, uh, they're not really front, they, it doesn't have front sensors but that's still a nice thing to have those uh, sensors properly functional and like I was telling you the flying experience is really nice I love the way it flies uh, it feels pretty agile, responsive and I think both beginners and you know people that have been flying for a while will certainly enjoy flying it uh, without any you know without actually uh, feeling that it's a gps quad now remember you can fly it both in gps mode and standard mode there is a switch that would allow you to switch between gps and normal mode but normal mode it means uh, altitude hold so there will be altitude hold so the drone will be using a barometer to keep the altitude but it won't keep its position so if you want to fly like this i would advise you to use the um, uh, normal mode but you can switch anytime to gps mode and pretty much uh, what you will see is that the drone stays in place like a rock look at it i mean barely moving you can also switch the led light on or off uh, with the transmitter so if you're flying, for example, uh, when it's dark, you can use the LED light to see the drone properly when coming to you. But check it out. I mean, it's so docile, so nice, yet so responsive and agile. Yeah, I'm really liking it. As I was telling you in the first video, I was really surprised by the capabilities of this drone. It would be nice, although I must say, to have a follow me mode and, a, you know, the circle around a fixed point mode, which many of these uh, drones have today. It doesn't have that but to tell you the truth mm, that's not a deal breaker in my opinion it's not a deal breaker but i know that many of you are certainly fond of the follow me mode because i get a lot of questions about this and i can tell you that so far uh, with the current firmware this drone does not offer that uh, on the other hand you saw that those sensors are fully functional you saw that it, wor it works uh, well with the app and you also saw that you can control it with, uh, with the transmitter without problems. So, okay, let's go to the conclusions now. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, uh, despite the fact that it lacks uh, follow me mode and circle around a fixed point mode. I think that uh, the fact that the app allows you to change many uh, parameters that i will show you in later videos uh, the fact that the fpv feed does not show any lag although to tell you the truth i, will, I, will, I only was flying around uh, 18 to 20 meters that's not a lot i know but you know i've, I've experienced already some lag with other quads at this distance I like that the agility that it shows when you fly it uh, in standard mode and actually in GPS mode as well, to tell you the truth. Uh, all the other functions work properly. Uh, the auto takeoff and landing, the auto return home, they all work properly. And it also, uh, the quality of the video, I will show you in the next video some uh, footage recorded with the onboard camera. Uh, so you can take a look at the quality of the video, but remember it is full HD, can record full HD. And uh, yeah, I mean, I certainly uh, recommend it. It's, it's a question of price. I think it's definitely a question of price. I would say that for what it offers, mm, it should be somewhere from 220 up to 280. I think that would be a reasonable price for uh, this quad. And then it will be competing maybe against quads like the Hobson uh, H501S and uh, yeah, sort of like this kind of quad. But uh, let me tell you, uh, let me let me know what you think about it. I mean, I would like to get some feedback from you guys. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I like it a lot, and I would definitely uh, recommend it. I'm, again, there is no shop selling it now. I think that I have seen, but. Uh, but yeah, probably some shops will start to sell it, you know. I've already sent an email to Banggood. Maybe they, they get it in stock. Let's see about that. 
Okay, so I hope you liked my video. If you did, please give me thumbs up. And I really hope to see you all in my next video.